Here we are in the Peterson Auto Museum. This is the Tesla exhibit. They have a, I'll show it to you if I can think about it, a Tesla truck outside. And this is the Tesla pickup. And this is the evolution of the Teslas. It's really pretty cool. I don't know, I don't, I'm not a big electric car lover. They're fast and they're kind of cool, but I'm not a big electric car guy. Yeah, I'd like to hear that V8. This is what I'm part of, I'd be interested in is these engines, motors. That's the part I think is interesting is these transaxles. They have to develop a way to put that carbon fiber, put that engine together to spin 20,000 RPMs. These motors. It's really cool. And then they build them with robots, and there's the batteries. Teslas. You see thousands of those things out here. Everybody's got a Tesla and a BMW, seems like, and a few Porsches. This, to, this is the battery, a whole bunch of batteries. Crazy. And how they're linked together. This is that Tesla Roadster. They shot one of these into space, if you guys remember. <laughs> I agree with this for a little while. Eventually, if they can go 500 miles and recharge in five minutes, there wouldn't be another gas car left to buy or have. It's just the recharge and the cost of the replacement of the battery. That's what gets me. See that like, bad idea. Can Tesla become a real automaker? Yeah, they're they're all right. Just depends on what you use them for right now. And you can't. And the pickup trucks ain't quite there yet. They'll get there. There's a Beamer out there. Pretty cool. What's funny is people don't realize electric cars were here before gas cars. There's an example right there. People just don't realize that. And then this is the 2009 prototype of the Model S. Then here's electric cars back in the day. So it's not anything new. They just got it, the technology just caught up enough to actually make them somewhat viable. Now you just gotta let it continue to progress. Pretty cool. So on the second floor, and this is the Porsche exhibit. They keep changing stuff, uh, so fresh exhibits. Mark Donahue. Yeah. Mark Donahue raced this. So that's a famous car. Here's Patrick Long, Patrick Dempsey's car, Steve McQueen's cars. I don't think this was Steve McQueen's. Maybe it was. Let's see. Formerly owned by Steve McQueen. So Steve McQueen drove this. It's kind of cool. 
76, yeah, it would be, yeah. That's his Steve McQueen's son, probably there. That's him sitting there. Chase McQueen, founders of McQueen Racing. Did you see this car over your shoulder? Steve McQueen's car. That one? Yep. Daughtry, Daughtry Automotive Group. Ferry Porsche. Schneider, Hurley Haywood, Mark Donahue, Ken Miles, Patrick Long. I recognize all these people. Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey, remember they did a documentary on him. He was big into racing. Uh, you remember uh, Patrick Dempsey, right, Ben? He's still running around. It's uh, it's uh, Tom Cruise there, right? Up sitting on this Porsche. Oh, this was used in uh, this one here, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah, see, that was her car. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this was a Porsche for Lucasfilm model. And then Doc Hollywood, see, remember he had that Porsche erect. used in a glass oh see this one this was in a movie used in glass onion and knives out mystery this 918 spider is badass hybrid yeah I bet you that thing scoots yeah I bet you that thing goes Slash guitarist. Personalizers. Ramry. Ooh, that's nice. Custom. Bob Ingram. Big time Porsche dude. Gene Deffers. Truckman and Barnes. I made a four door over there. It's probably the beginning of like that Panera. Panera, Panera, Panera. These types of objects are extremely interesting historically because we can see the trends that emerged in the world of Portland development. Well, people were back in the world of the world. Here's one uh, skis on it. That's pretty cool. World Rally Tour, 20,000 miles over seven continents. They had to put do all kinds of stuff. Antarctic Ice Challenge. Porsche Chris Branding over there. They're all into stuff. Now here comes my one of my favorites. This is kind of the one I want because I'm gonna I'll show you what I'm gonna what I, in just a second here. Okay, we're done with the Porsches. Now here is what. It's my attention because I want to build one of these. I got a 327 sitting there ready to go. All I need is the body. So I want to build, I'd like to build one of these before I die. 
This is Peterson's. Uh, he started Hot Rod. I remember, you know, I had Hot Rod Carcraft and the Motor Trend magazines as a kid. And this was uh, the guy in the center there, him and his wife. Um, he started it uh, right after World War II and became a multimillionaire. And then they created this museum. I'd like to build, this is my kind of style here, is this type of, because this is a salute to the deuce, the 32s. That's cool. I could have a little deuce coupe. Deuce turns 90. I met an old guy in Florida one time when I was at the beach. I was riding my motorcycle. I went out and hung out at the beach for a little bit one afternoon. I had some time to kill. And I got talking to him. He was in a VW bus sitting there taking pictures on the beach. And we got talking. And uh, he uh, was a photographer for... Uh, Hot Rod, and he's retired from Peterson. This was a uh, 32 Ford used by Ricky Nelson in Roadster. And this was the Iron Man flathead sitting in the Iron Man 1. You guys can see it here. Stop it. Yeah, that's it. The one he did the flames on. Look here, babe, the Iron Man. The Iron Man 32. Remember from the first Iron Man? And then that's Ricky Nelson's. That was the one that was on the set of the Iron Man movie. All these have some history to them. This is a Foose Deuce. This is Foose's car. We'd met Chip Foose. Shook his hand, talked to him for a little bit. Good guy. Met him at the NSRA show up in Louisville. It's going on this weekend, which kind of sucks. But there's a Foose car. See if this one has any kind of history. Model A. Yeah, this is the stuff I like, and I want to build one of these before I'm dead. Maybe make it. I got an engine sitting there. Got a 327 I could throw in it. And I got a 302 I could throw in it. Speed and splendor. Very slow pace and adjust the right angle so you don't scrape the rear. Another very dramatic styling element of this car is a sloping grill shell. And I say shell, not grill. Delage. 1937 Delage. Look at that thing. Look at that. Holy cow. And this is a Ferrari. Holy mackerel. Rolls Royce Phantom 1 Aerodynamic Coupe, 1925 to 34. What a sled. They were intended to be very uh, correctly formal cars, and it was considered a, a bit of a Top speed. To, to make but it was 108 horsepower with a 7 liter straight six. Um, <laughs> Built 2,000 of them, though. So because the fin on this car is so large, wow. you cannot design a trunk lid to open the way they normally do, which is from the, the front. Wow. So this one opens from that the thing's longer than my Super this, Duty. And it reveals <laughs> luggage. <that's laughs> that is freaking cool. What would be really cool would be to put a modern engine in it. And I bet you it cruises off. Look at the size of the wheels on this thing. Those things are at least, probably at least 35s. Look at that thing. Isn't that crazy? Is that what he's talking about? Because he's talking about where the top opens the side and specially made luggage. I think it's this one. See this one? I think it's this Bugatti. 
Thank you for joining us to talk about our 1925 slash 1934 round door roll. Course. Yeah, that's we that's it. That's it. That's it. That round door rolls. That's an incredible car. That's insane. It did, it looks like something out of a cartoon or something. Look at the front end on this. Man. Look how the windows open. They split. Let's see if I can get a shot of the inside here, guys. Ain't much room in that. Ain't much room, more room than that Audi A3 I'm driving. There's a GT40 Ford, or at least a, yeah, GT40 Mark III. It's a 67, so these are some of the original. It's a purpose-built street version. Extremely limited numbers. So this is a very rare car as well. Looks like they only built seven of these Mark III's. Multi-million dollar car sitting right here. As is this, <laughs> of course. And this. Money that's in this room right now. And this particular car, they only built 16 of them. It's a 57 Jaguar. So, hey babe. They only built seven of those GT40s right there. I don't know how many of the left. They only built 16 of these. These are all concepts, pictures that'd be neat to have in your basement. Mercer. Nineteen thirteen Mercer. They did build two hundred and fifty of these. Coming up on the motorcycle one. I'm wearing my Indian shirt today. <laughs> this one's pretty cool too. She's a sweet one. Amazing how they built these things. Thirty-nine Bugatti Cabriolet built one of them. Crown Prince in the Shah of Iran. His ride. They only built. There's only. This was the only one built. Yeah. <laughs> it belonged to the Shah of Iran. Plymouth Explorer. Only built one of these. 54. They only built one of these. I can see it's kind of crazy looking. Carrazzo Ghia of Italy designed it to gauge the reception of this style. This is from the Peterson Archive. They showed different cars because they change their different displays. And then here you go. Yeah. This is cool too. I think these are, some of these were on loan from Barber. I don't know if this is the group that was. It, it would say this is the Charles Nurbrich. So this guy's this guy's collection. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's Barber, yeah. That's from Barber. That's tiny. Scooters. See out here they'll have car shows up here on the rooftop. Yeah. So they'll have car shows and you walk in and out of here. 
miniaturized motorcycling. That's what it is. This is an example of miniaturized motorcycling. Munch. Munch Mammoth. That is, too. She's a beast. Well, and then uh, 52 Triumph. That's a 52 Triumph Speed Twin Custom. That'd be a fun bike to own and to put in the back of my 56. Here's a 28 Indian Scout, like your Scout Bobber. That'd be fun to have, too. Oh, that's a different gallery. Pomoda. I remember these were hot thing and then you could buy my ZX-14 and my Concourse-14 were just as good or better production bikes where these were exclusive. I mean, back in the 90s, these were high dollar because of the Brembo brakes and the exotic stuff. And then you could buy it for 10 grand. You could buy a ZX-14. It would just destroy it. A little heavier, though. Let's look at this Indian right here. Junior Scout. Junior Scout. 1940s. Mm -hmm. Yep, Borelli. And a Norton. I remember the old Nortons. They had neighbors that had a 750 Norton or a 60s. Oh yeah, that's cool. 1905 Indian Signal. Two horse, high high powered. Sunbeam. And then you come back into this other side of the Porsche. And there's Bor Borber Motorsports Park over there by the house. We should probably have to go to that again. See what the inside of that looks like, you guys. Yeah, we'll go to that one again because that's pretty cool. We're on the third floor. We just looked at the motorcycles and stuff, and uh, that one in the corner over there. This is L.A. Survivor. It actually stayed, stayed its whole life, 100 years in L.A. That one with the yellow frame. And it survived being in somebody's garage here in L.A. It's a Nash Healy, 53 Nash Healy. This is a bike from the Terminator and the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine. Probably can get around on the other side to this, maybe not. I can see if we can get around the other side. These are a lot of the Hollywood cars. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Good luck. 56 back. I just saw one of these riding down the road. You see these, a ton of these at the car shows. I think they're working on this gallery. So you won't be able to see it as well. It kind of sucks. There's Eleanor. There's the Batmobile. And a Starsky and Hutch car. That looks like a couple others. 
the DeLorean way down there that belonged to Back to the Future. Kind of sucks you can't see that because it's kind of why people come here. So you can't get in on those. Oh, yeah? What is it? Because it's... Uh, Re they're redoing it, so and that's why really people come here for some of that Hollywood stuff. This is what you were talking about, the Miracle Mile. Mm -hmm. That was Mulholland. I was telling you we yeah. saw Mulholland yeah. Highway, and then the Hollywood Bowl when they're building it, and they're showing all the stuff, the major street traffic plans and the layout. Some of this was from Route 66. See how Route 66 terminated here, which brought a ton of people. This uh, this Bullocks in Wilshire. Um, see that building? We might have seen that yesterday. That building? I think we drove right by it. Let's see what we got here. Alright, Scooby-Doo. And that sucks. The DeLorean's sitting over there in the corner. You can't go see it. And then, uh, this thing is, I think that's one of the Fast and Furious deals. And then this BMW. And uh, Knight Rider and Starsky and Hutch in Eleanor and the Batmobile. Do you see Knight Rider? Uh, yeah, they got Knight Rider and the Starsky and Hutch Torino uh, and then Eleanor from Gone in 60 oh, Seconds yeah. and then the Batmobile. I forget what this one is. I almost want to say, I don't know, Tron Blade Runner type vehicle. That one's, I think, Fast and Furious. Then you got Scooby-Doo down there, and then see way in the corner, which sucks, is the Back to the Future car. Oh, man. Yeah, this exhibit's <laughs> being worked on. Bummer. All right, you guys. And here's Lightning McQueen. And in Los Angeles, the living city. So you got a prototype of this, a couple of these futuristic concept cars. Looks like they had more here, but... Uh, yeah. They're changing this exhibit. They're changing that Hollywood one too. Nineteen fifty five Gia Gilda. One on one build. these things driving around on the street. I, I had a 56 I painted that color. 54 Alfa Romeo. Bat 7. B-A-T-7. One bill. Number 7. Bat 7. Number bill 1. I don't know why they call it Bat 7. It's got this uh, little porthole. Uh, wing coming up like this. And then the vents to ventilate it, and it was tight. And it's got a tilt front end. It looks like no, it's got a hood. I don't know what, oh, that's how you get in the door. You push this button to get in the door. That's where they lock the door. You push that, and I think it probably Pushes swings it. out. Probably suicide doors. Uh -huh. It would, you know, maybe not. Maybe it pushes there and unlocks it, and then it still tilts out because I couldn't see it tilting backwards because of that fin. Yeah. This thing's kind of crazy too. They're tiny inside, for as long as they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a two-seater. That looks like it'd be a fun car. That's what they ought to do is make this thing electric. That that's an electric car. You gotta push the wheels out a little farther. Kind of like that. So that's a little more stable platform, looks like. 1959 book sports cars of the future. <laughs> that's crazy. See that color, babe? That color? Yeah. 